Scouting Report look at the four real Hoosiers of Indiana. All that and more coming up next. Time ago said that a tie was like kissing your sister. Well, Michigan and Iowa tied 17-17 Saturday, and I don't think it was as good as kissing your sister well, as far as you're concerned. Well, I don't think either team very happy with that tie. Um, both teams had a chance to win it, and of course, uh, we had the most uh, uh, recent chance by being down there right at the end with a minute left and fumbling the ball on the goal line. When it's like that, does it almost feel like a loss to you, Bo? Oh, I think so. I don't think that people look at that. Uh, someone asked me afterward if we would like the uh, National Football League overtime, and I said, for this game, yes, <laughs> I, I'd like to go back out there and play another quarter. One of the things that uh, happened in the Iowa game is they came out early and, I mean, were throwing it all over the ballpark. They threw it Well, I, I, I thought this, uh, Jim, Iowa played their best game of the year, and we sort of anticipated that. They were fired up and, and uh, did a great job. They had a lot of their people back that had been hurt. And, uh, the quarterback played a great game, and so did this big cook. Uh, a tight end who's... Did you uh, think they'd throw it as much as they did earlier? Oh, yeah. I, th I thought they'd times. throw the football. I've never looked at Iowa in the last couple of years as being the type of team that thinks they're going to beat you with a run. Uh, most of the running plays are draw plays and things like that, but uh, here at counter play, we didn't play very well, and they got an easy touchdown. 7 nothing at that point. That was their second possession, and then you come back, and... Uh, you really start to move on again. You'd go through the air. We started off very poorly, uh, Jim. Uh, and and uh, first couple of possessions, we didn't do much. And then finally, we got started a little bit and got a few runs off. Tony here running off tackle, doing a good job and picking up big yardage. Um, on offense, uh, we were a little spotty. Once again, we had too many penalties. Um, we had too many miscommunications again. And uh, I think that contributed greatly. Uh, we had to settle for a field goal on this drive to cut the margin to 7-3. to three. But uh, the first half, other than the final drive, when we took the ball down there and scored just before the half, we really didn't do a very good job offensively. Very windy day. Mike Gillette here kicking into yeah. that win, and they get the field position advantage here. Easy, because uh, on the punt, he's kicking into a very strong win. And, uh, and consequently, uh, they made a catch at midfield and got down to... Uh, inside our 30. Did they give you many new wrinkles? Yeah, quite a bit. They did uh, very well in their short passing game. They screened a lot, uh, a lot of draw plays. Uh, and uh, let's face it, they moved the ball fairly well against our defense, much more than I anticipated they would. You stop them there, though. They have to settle for the field goal, 10-3. But then this is the key play that gets you in trouble again. This is the one that really hurt. Uh, Mike fumbles the ball, and our tackle falls on it and fails to recover it. Uh, I don't know, Tom, uh, I thought he had it, and all of a sudden, somebody else had it. And so that ends up giving them a touchdown deep in our territory, and now we're really trailing 17 to 3. And at this point in the game, I think uh, we took over. I mean, I think we uh, were, you know, we're the dominant team uh, scoring the rest of the points, but uh, when it's all said and done, we went down in there to win it and couldn't do it. The team really responded, too, and I think that shows some of the character of this club, the fact they were down 17-3, and like you said, at that point, just decided to take over. Yeah, I think they uh, they decided this is enough, and let's start getting something done, and they played very hard and very well. Well, I'm sure you had something to do with it. You had a little talk with a few of them, I would bet. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I think they, you know, there's a lot of character there, and they, they decided to come out and play hard, and they did. Tony Bowles ran hard against this team. He's going to be a fine back. I thought he played an excellent game. Here's the controversy. Yeah. You're having trouble getting the signals off. Well, uh, what, what happens is uh, the, the official, uh, the referee here does not understand the game. He does not understand that you cannot communicate unless you have uh, a quiet audience. That's his responsibility to give the visiting team a chance. He failed to do that. Kept saying that we could run. He thinks you run a play hut, hut, and snap the ball. And uh, whatever you call in the huddle, that's what you run. And unfortunately, that's not the game today. They called a five-yard delay game penalty on you. On us, well, and even the Iowa players were trying to get the uh, crowd calmed down, and, and he called a five-yard delay game penalty on us. And then gave you 15 more, but you overcame that. We overcame that and scored anyway. Scored to make it 17-10 at halftime, and 
at that point, you had to feel, I think, fortunate at half to be only down seven. Well, I, I told them at halftime we had played so poorly and we were only down by seven points that they will not score the second half and we'll take this game away from them. I really felt that way, and I think our team felt that way, too. How much adjustments did you have to make with the different looks that they were giving you at half? The biggest adjustment we had to make was in our offense, Jim, because we couldn't hear. When you can't hear, it almost takes you out of half of your offense. So we had to cut way down. We had to put two backs in the backfield. We had to... We had to do a lot of different things, and it really cut back on our offense. Well, the second half was when the game was really had a chance to be won by Michigan, but it didn't happen. Don't go away. The second half highlights are coming up next when Michigan Replay continues. We made a lot of mistakes out there today on offense that we shouldn't have had. You know, those mistakes cost us the game. I, I felt, you know, we started taking control, and... I felt we were the better team out there. I felt they started getting tired. And, you know, we were doing our jobs. We doing, had our assignments going correctly. But then we would get down when we get close to scoring and getting a touchdown or maybe a field goal. You know, we had breakdowns and penalties and things like that. And that's, that's what stopped us. Mistakes like that will never work for me again. To get your copy of the 10 year war, call 1 800 356 2820. The cost is just $32.95. It's a must for your home video library. How about thinking? Uh, we just came up short. One of the things we talked about before we went to the break was the problem with the noise in the stadium at Kinnick Stadium. And you said, you know, it took us out of how much offense did it really take out of your game? because you had to communicate and you couldn't because of the noise i think quite a bit um we Percentage? pretty much decided we had we had a few pass plays we we're going to run or we run off tackle and that's about it and uh and fortunately we were moving the ball pretty well we ran fairly decently but um crowd noise is very very difficult it's difficult to handle i uh i don't know maybe uh maybe there's a better way to do it i don't know how to do it but uh, you've got to be able to hear, and I think that's the responsibility of the officials. If they're not going to help you, you're going to be in trouble. Now, especially a team like you, a lot of audibles at the line is going to take a lot of offense that's off the, the way field. we play. I'm sure that's the way a lot of other people play. You know? Opening up the third quarter, though, Iowa starts to move the ball on the ground, which is a bit of a surprise. Yeah, that was. And then they came back and fumbled here on fourth down, and, and uh, we took the football over. And this is a key drive. You start in your own one. Yeah, third and seven here. Mike goes back and uh, and hits McMurtry on the outcut for a first down. He drove 99 yards for a touchdown, and uh, I thought our team really played well, played hard, ran well, uh, took control of the game, really. And overcame a couple of penalties also in this drive. Yes, we had a couple of big penalties here we had to overcome. We must have driven. In the 99 yards, we probably drove 125 <laughs> in order to score. But uh, we did it. Uh, but it's true, we were running off tackle, and that's about it. We didn't have a lot of... And, and you uh, felt that you had to do that because the crowd noise gets into it, especially yeah, down close when you get well, close well, to When the... we went to the I formation, the tailback could not hear. So we went to the split back formation, which allows them to hear a little bit better. Just difficult to hear, that's all. This is a big third and 13, and uh, Mike goes uh, deep here to Colasar. John makes one of his patented great catches in the end zone for a touchdown, and we got the score tied now. At this point in the game, I thought we were in control. And they come back and again go to the air, and your defense really stiffened when they got close. Yes, I thought they played pretty well. They, they hit the tight end again on that pass down the sideline, and I wish we'd have done a better job of covering. And uh, But then we stiffened. Mark Mesner makes a great play behind the line of scrimmage, and, and uh, we forced them into a long field goal. I didn't think he had a chance to kick it. It was uh, more than a 50-yarder, and uh, wind was blowing in his face. Um, there was no chance for that ball to make it. So I um, felt comfortable then because we got good field position. This one we put on the drive. Yeah, and about eight minutes to go, you really are going to close the game We're out. We're closing the game out time-wise, score-wise, every way. I mean, uh, couldn't have done it, uh, you know, drawn it up any better. Um, we just kept pecking away at it and moving down, getting into position. Here's a big third and 16, and Mike goes back and hits McMurtry again. And Greg had a great day. He made some very tough catches for us that uh, uh, kept us going. Second effort there got you the first down right. inside the 20. Right. Then we come off tackle. Tony does a great job. Runs the ball down inside the three. We take the ball to the one-yard line, and then it's just second down and one. We're eating up the clock. I didn't even care if we scored here if we ate up the clock, but I didn't want to fumble the football. 
and uh, unfortunately we fumbled the ball and that was the game. There was only about a minute left. Iowa took the ball and moved it a little bit and really well, they the had game... one timeout left. There wasn't much chance for them to get a, uh, in position for a field goal. Right. And uh, the one thing about the tie, though, uh, in the Big Ten race, if you look at it, it's not good, obviously, a game you should have won. You still are in control of your own destiny in the Big Ten. Well, if you win, win the rest of the games, we'll win the championship uh, because the only team we don't play is Purdue. And uh, so uh, I would say, you know, if we could win the rest of our games, that's it. But, uh, you know, I didn't like the tie. What, is the, what was the kids' attitude about it? I mean, we were in the locker room after the game. I think the they feel the same way I do. We kind of discuss it, you know, that we lost the game. Uh, you know, we figured to win it. We knew I would play hard. We knew it would be a tough game. Uh, we just figured we were a little bit better than they are, and we ought to win it. But uh, they played a great game. Let's give them credit. They played a tremendous game, and uh, we came up short. The one thing I think, if, if you look at the game, uh, step back and take a look at it, the one thing I think you'd like to work on most of all is more, a little more consistency offensively and maybe stop some penalties. Well, I think uh, part of the penalty, Jim, is you can't hear. If you can't hear, you're going offside and, and you're setting on pass protection before the starting count. It's hard. It's, it's hard. I, uh, the penalties uh, like that are, you know, they're excusable. But uh, holding penalties, we didn't have very many of those. We had one or two, but not too many. Uh, but the bottom line is we just made too many mistakes. But the one fumble gave them a touchdown, and the other fumble cost us a touchdown. That combination really ended up, caused us to end up with a tie. Well, it still means you're in the race for the Big Ten Championship, and we also are going to take a look next at the comeback of the kicking game. Don't go away. That's next when Michigan Replay continues. Well, a tie is kind of like a loss. You know, to us, it's not a loss in the win and loss column, but a lot more depressing because we should have beat them, clearly. Just no question we should have won that game. But we'll be ready for next week. Marines Mike Gillette in 88. In the first two games, the Michigan kicker missed key field goals, and both games were lost by a total of three points. But against Michigan State, Gillette turned his season around with an electrifying touchdown run on a fake punt. The Wolverines won that one 17-3. Gillette accounted for 11 of those points. And finally, the pain of the Notre Dame and Miami games was over. You know, I'll take uh, the blame for the losses against Notre Dame and Miami, Florida. I wasn't really kicking well because I came in concentrating on punting. I concentrated too much on punting instead of evening him out. And so I think that hurt the team in a way. And uh, for me to give something positive back to the team, back to our, our goals being Big Ten champs, really made me feel good and, and contributed to our goal. This is Gillette's first year at handling both the punting and place-kicking duties. And that may have been the problem early. Doing both jobs is not as easy as it sounds, especially when your confidence is shaken. Early when I was having a slump there, when I was 5 for 10 in the last the first three games of the year, I was, those goal posts were pretty small. Now. You know, I haven't missed in practice. I haven't missed in the game in a couple weeks, and I'm, I'm feeling good. The goalposts are getting wider. It's more of a mental thing than it is a physical thing. I can I can relate to it physically, being a catcher and a pitcher on a baseball team when I was in high school. Uh, it's two different arm motions. Just like in, in kicking here, it's two different leg motions, so you kind of have to get it mentally toned to what you're doing. Uh, when I'm punting, I got to remember to walk straight forward and, you know, and leg whip. When I'm kicking, I got to concentrate, keep my head down, you know, follow through with the ball. So. It's two different uh, adjustments you have to make as far as place kicking and punting, but I think in time, as time goes on, we're going to get better and better at this. With the mental part of the game coming together, Gillette can set his sights on the team goal of a Big Ten championship, but he's already rewritten the Wolverine record books. If you haven't heard, with his TD run against Michigan State, he surpassed both Anthony Carter and Tom Harmon as Michigan's all-time leading scorer, something even Gillette finds hard to believe. It hasn't really hit me yet. It probably won't hit me for five years. Uh, you know, Tommy Harmon's Michigan football. He's the only Heisman Trophy uh, winner at Michigan. Uh, Anthony Carter, what can you say about him, the best receiver in the NFL, is, in my eyes. Uh, for me to be up there is, is quite a award and a reward for me, I should say. Uh, and the fact we'll have a discussion on the issue of... Spotty. Once again, we have too many penalties. Um, we have too many miscommunications again, and uh, I think that contributed greatly. Uh, we had to settle for a field goal on this drive to cut the margin to 7-3. to three. But uh, 
The first half, other than the final drive, when we took the ball down there and scored just before the half, we really didn't do a very good job offensively. Very windy day. Mike Gillette here kicking into yeah. that wind, and they get the field position advantage here. Easy, because uh, on the punt. Scouting report, look at the four real Hoosiers of Indiana. All that and more coming up next. time ago said that a tie was like kissing your sister. Uh, Michigan and Iowa tied 17-17 Saturday, and I don't think it was as good as kissing your sister well, as far as you're concerned. Well, I don't think either team very happy with that tie. Um, both teams had a chance to win it, and of course, all plays and things like that, but uh, here at counter play, we didn't play very well, and they got an easy touchdown. 7 nothing at that point. That was their second possession, and then you come back, and... Uh, you really start to move the ball again. You'd go through the air. We started off very poorly, uh, Jim. Um, and and uh, first couple of possessions, we didn't do much. And then finally, we got started a little bit. and Got a few runs off. Tony here running off tackle, doing a good job and picking up big yardage. Um, on offense, uh, we were throwing it all over the ballpark. They threw it. Well, I, I, I thought this, uh, Jim, Iowa played their best game of the year. And we sort of anticipated that. They were fired up and and uh, did a great job. They had a lot of their people back that had been hurt. And, uh, the quarterback played a great game, and so did this big cook, uh, the tight end. Who's, did you uh, think they'd throw it as much as they did earlier? Oh, yeah, I, th I thought times. they'd throw the football. I've never looked at Iowa in the last couple of years as being the type of team that thinks they're going to beat you with a run. Uh, most of the running plays are drawn. Uh, we had the most uh, uh, recent chance by being down there right at the end with a minute left and fumbling the ball on the goal line. When it's like that, does it almost feel like a loss to you, Bo? Oh, I think so. I don't think that people look at that. Uh, someone asked me afterward if we would like the uh, National Football League go overtime, and I said, for this game, yes, I, I'd like to go back out there and play another quarter. One of the things that uh, happened in the Iowa game is they came out early, and I mean, we're 